Hello, I thought I would update this as I've updated my digital workflow. Um, I just thought I would share what I do and see if it helps out anyone and if anyone sees any ways that I can improve this, please let me know. But this is my digital workflow from scans to ortho analyzer to appliance designer to my Envision Tech Vector. So it really starts off with this here. Um, organization. Um, I have a file folder that I can read that I put scans into. Um, I have a file folder that's going to th 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 three shape, and of course the refactory plates and the vector jobs and the export folder, which all comes into play, uh, trying to maximize my workflow time. So already in here to th three shape, I have me. So the first thing that I do is I open up ortho analyzer, which I really shouldn't have to do. Right now I have a bug. I should just be able to do this all in in um, appliance designer, but right now I can't. So the first thing that I do is I create a new patient. Uh, Chris 5 and Juski 11, because I've done this so many times. <laughs> uh, create. Then I'm going to create a new model set. Uh, I, I always like to use the date, just because it makes things simpler. Then it's going to bring in the import models. And then I have it set it up to where it just goes right to the folder that I have them in. And then I load that. Now, typically, I'm going to have a bunch of these. Um, I do a bunch at a time. I do not do them one at a time. But for the purpose of the video, I just have the one. So after this gets done, this is all loaded now, as you can see. I would typically just click on here, the patient browser, to create a new one. But since I don't have any more, I'll just get out of that. And I'll open up Appliance Designer. And this is going to take a couple seconds. And then I just search. So, Gajewski, Gajewski 11. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is prepare model sets. So the first thing that it's going to do is ask me for the occlusal and sagittal planes. I'm going to make these. Uh, I'm not being very careful here because all that I'm trying to produce is working models. Um, just get them, just get these to the printer as quickly as I can. Uh, I do the spline lines as close to the teeth as I possibly can, um, just because I don't want to waste resin. Yes, I do need to make, make aligners for myself. I'm working on that. I've been too busy to do it. Uh, these are pretty good scans, um, so I'm not going to have to do too much touch up with them. But you can really get bad scans where they're just ugly. Fit base. Now, with the new one, I got to hit this button, scale symmetrically. And what I found out that my new employee didn't know is that I can increase the base size with this. Um, it doesn't really matter how long the base is or how wide the base is because it's all going to be cut off anyway. But I just like to make it so that it'll fit on the screen, include all the splines, um, and then I'm ready to go into the next step, which is create base. And then this will bring me into the sculpt tools. So I just click there, and I really got to work on the hotkeys things. But the first thing that I do is I come in here to spline cut. I do the curvy thing, and I cut down what I want. Um, I try to keep it as close to the gums as possible up until this point, 
at this point I really don't care because I got to come back as you will see in the next step and cut in a little bit clo closer. So I have that. It's going to cut and then I tip it a little bit. I got to go out then come back in and then I do another one exact same thing is all that I'm trying to do here is just cut as much as away as possible. And then just hit the green arrow key. And then I come into all these are hot keys here. So my first one is just a general smooth tool, which I probably don't need to print, but I do anyway. Uh, probably a little bit OCD but I just smooth out all these lines. Now with the sculpt tool, with the smooth tool and everything else, you can do a lot of different things. Like if I was gonna make um, a holly with ball class here, I would notch out for the ball class here with the extract tool. Um, that's, that's the remove tool, that's the add tool, that's the smooth tool. But, but typically that's all that I do. Um, and then I come into the rear view, come into the plane cut. Uh, I hit control so that it creates a, a straight line, swap the cut direction, and then just hit activate. And then that gives me my model to print. So I'll click next here, and I'll do the same thing on the lower one. Oh, hit the wrong thing. And I like to leave a little bit extra for the next step. It costs me a little bit more in resin. Oh, the smooth, the, the rounded tool. Um, but it just makes it easier to bend. Um, I, I know people that are trying to save every single penny on resin. And I just found that it just creates more time. And time is money. So... Do you save money on resin or do you save money on time? Um, I prefer to save money on time. So I'll just add a little bit more. Uh, again, the smooth tool. I don't have to, I typically don't have to cut anything off in the lower because there's no flare uh, on the lower. Um, I do like to get into here and just smooth this down. This isn't ideal, but It'll work enough for the video. Um, and then I do the same thing with the plane cut. Control, drag, and then hit apply. Um, again, I leave a little bit extra for the next step because, I mean, you don't need all this. But it's easier to work with with the wire and the acrylic. So next, done. I imagine I could have smoothed some things, but then I just come in here and I make a new appliance. So I change the appliance ID to the patient's name, which in this case it's me, C. Majewski. Export model for appliance type, and then I leave the production equipment as any, and I'll show you why in the next step. So create. Now, it took me a long time to learn. I've had appliance designer for years, um, and I never knew that this existed, but this makes my job a whole lot easier. It starts off with the model hollowing. I found 2.5 surface thickness works well, variable thickness, add a drain grid, and I changed the, the drain grid to six. And I drag this up because this is going to be where the, grid, the drain grid starts. And I do this all for a reason, and I will show you in the next step. Now, it's hollowing the model right now. I'm going to take a sip of coffee because this takes a little bit. Cheers on this Saturday morning. Demo. Let's go. Um, again, it's, I mean, I can play with the, uh, the surface thickness. I've. I've heard of people that go with a much thinner one. Um, I've been printing now for 
10 months with the vector and I haven't had any failed prints and to me that's important. But I'll flip this around, that's what it looks like. So it's hollow with the drain grid um, and then I got a nice edge and then I got to come back here because the next thing is adding a name tag. So the ID text is already in there. I switched detachable to integrate it. I wish I could figure out how to change these defaults. Um, text depth, I like negative 1.5 and font height 6 seems to work pretty well for me. And I click here, it pops up. You're never going to get this exact because this thing is just funky and I typically just do the best that I can and move on. So I just click next and then we got to go through a bunch of steps that I don't even know what they're there for. Um, again, this is something else that I'm looking for help with if I can change this because modify model next, I don't need it. Um, everything's been modified the way that I want it to be. Validation, I don't even know what that is. Next. And then it's going to go into maxillary finalization. Now, if all that I had was a maxillary or a, a lower, I would just start the export process now, but I don't. So I'm going to click next. It's going to bring me up on the lower, pull that into place, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the upper. Variable thickness, add drain grid, six, pull that down. If you leave this up too high, it's going to create very thin walls. Um, my employee asked me why, and I answered honestly, I have no freaking idea. Next. Um, there's just a lot of things like um, she'll come and get me. She's fantastic. She's learning this extremely well. Um, and she'll come and get me with like, why is it doing this? Why is it doing that? And I really don't know. Um, like sometimes it'll just decide that it wants to do something else. And you just have to get by as best as you can. So, so I added the name. And this is all me. This is my big mouth. And then we got to go through all this stuff again. Again, I think that a large part of this that makes that will make our jobs easier is just having an organized workflow um, to get this done as quickly as possible. We want to get these to the printers, then off the printer. So I can go into export. And then I choose the post processing, the post processing. Then I'm going to change this path. Um, it's going to pop up with something else. Export to the vector folder. Okay. Okay. Then I would typically have, like with the ortho analyzer, I would typically have a lot more. So I would save. Um, see what happens here and then I would typically close and then go into the next patient but I don't have any more patients so I'll just get out of here then it's all done um, all the rest is really simple uh, I made another video on just using the Profactory software so I'll just run through this kind of quick created my build plate I'm going to add my models. This would typically be filled, but I only have the two for a, a reason. Okay. And then as I say in the other video, that's just about the perfactory, I just go into realignment, which shows the mesh. Then I'm teaching the computer what the bottom of the models are. So it orients them properly. I do automatic placement. Um, I go by part contours, leveling, and place and center. Okay. And of course, this one's upside down. So I have to go out and come back in. Now, typically, I got a bunch of lowers that I have to do this to. Um, I go into realignment, bring up the mesh, and just do this process again. And then do this process again with the placement. Okay. 
and then that's it. It's ready to build. Um, I already have these selected, so I would just go into build. Not all parts have supports. I never have supports. Yes. And then it's going to bring up the building program. And I'm going to hit start. It's going to go right into the Profactory plates. Okay. And then it's going to start now. I only have two models, so this should be fairly quick. The more models that you have, this will take a lot longer. But as I said, I did just make a video just on this. Um, so you can find that on the same place that you found this one. Um, i got to organize my videos. I'm not a videographer. I just try to make these things to just help people get through the basic stuff. Okay, so that's done. The close. It's all ready to print. But is it? I don't know. So I come into the next Perfactory program, which is the Job Inspector. So I open the file, Perfactory Plates. I try to I try to neat, re rename these so I can keep track of them if I got a bunch go in and on. But I'm going to open up that one. I'm going to open up the job description data. And then I'm going to click on section one. And this just shows me that it's level. Um, if there were any problems, which you get sometimes because of weird things happening, like only half of this would be showing, um, or this might not be showing. That tells me that it's not level, and I got to go back into the Profactory software and play with it a little bit. But well, this is perfect. So I can come into my Profactory plates, drag the sample or drag the file over into Vector Jobs. And then that's it. I can go over to the printer nail, load the job, start to print, and it's going to print. So that's my workflow. Um, hope it helps. Uh, if you see any places or can answer any of the questions that I posed, please let me know. Uh, thank you.